All right, today we have a new battery from Lee Time. Let's open it up. All right, so we got our quick start guide, our product manual, terminal bolts, some communication cables here. All right, and there's the battery. So this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And this has their smart Bluetooth and it's their complex edition. So that means that it has some ports up here for CAN and RS-45 communications. Very neat. So that's what those cables are for. They also sent me their monitoring screen. It says for battery RS-45 communication. So let's open that up and see what we've got here. And there's a manual for the screen. And here we are, there's our screen. It's got a little housing. Uh, for mounting there's some yeah there's a bracket here and then it has a cable it looks like it has that uh, screw on kind of terminal all right let's, so let's examine the battery a little bit closer uh, we've got a button here we've got those two communication ports and of course we've got our positive and negative battery terminals uh, Yes, we're 100 amp hour. Uh, it says maximum continuous charge and discharge current is 100 amps. Well, let's let's see if we can push this button. Okay, we got lights. So I wonder if we can go ahead and hook this guy up. So the box for this screen specified 485 communications on it and this top port says can P uh, RS45 the other one doesn't say uh, 485 on it so let's connect it to the one that says 45 it's that there we go now can we turn this on okay here we go There it is. So it's showing a 52% state of charge. Let's see. Oh, I have to push this button. Well, how do we go? Oh, there we go. We'll push this button. Okay, so it shows number of batteries and the capacity remaining. Shows our status, discharge on. Here's some more details. The voltage, current, temperature. Oh, here's our status, showing normal. Okay, let's get a charger hooked up and we'll start charging this guy up. Okay, charger's running. And there we go, we're showing 28.5 amps going in. Yeah, 370 uh, watts. Or 379 watts. All right, so I'm looking through the manual uh, where it talks about these communication ports. And it says this can P, can I port can be used to communicate with an external Victron GX device uh, by provided battery to Victron GX device communication cable, which I'm assuming is this one. This is the one that has the uh, 45 end on it. And I just so happen to have a Victron GX device right here 
So let's hook it up and see if we can get it to work. I'm going to hook up some power. Connector here, I'm assuming we'll go into the CAN bus on the Victron. Okay, so our Victron is booting up. All right, let's see. I don't think we're detecting a battery yet, so maybe we need to go into settings. Yeah, so no battery monitor found. I probably had to set something. Um, I had this previously set for another battery. One eternity later. All right, guys, it's working now. Uh, I made a mistake. It was my fault. I forgot to put that little Terminator plug in right there. And uh, when I did, it just fired right up. <laughs> So there it is. Uh, we are showing the battery at 77%, uh, no wattage, 13.4 volts. Uh, so let's start charging the battery again. I did interrupt the charging to hook this up. All right, there we go. Sorry, there's a glare and it's out of focus. Uh, but yeah, we're showing 384 watts uh, charging the battery so this thing was uh, really just plug it in make sure you've got that uh, uh, little terminator plug in it's in the VE CAN port and as far as the settings go it's pretty simple go down to services the e can port and i've got it set to profile can bus bms lv 500 kilobits uh, that's the one i've got it set to i don't know if it'll work on the other ones but that's the one i usually use to connect this to a battery uh, so seems to be working oops There we go. All right, so super neat. Uh, you can connect your battery directly to your Victron GX devices. Uh, so very nice. You, you don't have to have any shunts or anything like that. Um, you also don't have to have a shunt if you just use their screen. I wonder if their screen works at the same time as this. Yeah, it looks like it does. Yep, so we got both the Victron and their screen hooked up. All right, super neat. I'm gonna let this thing fully charge up. All right, guys, so I've got it hooked up to do a capacity test. I've got my shunt set up here. I went ahead and got the uh, Victron still attached so we could see how that's working. Uh, the battery's at 100% if you can see that. So let's go ahead and turn on the inverter and that should start the test. And then we'll turn on the air conditioner which is hooked up as the load. And we're off. So currently we are drawing 630 watts according to this shunt. Uh, this one's currently saying about 500 watts. I think it's gone down a little bit. Yeah, we are actually going down. It's insane, 430. It's because the air conditioner is, it starts up a little bit higher and then it starts to kind of simmer down. 
it looks like we're pulling 28.5 amps and showing about 27.8 29 amps here all right i'm gonna let it keep running and i'll be back all right so here we are my shunt here is saying three percent left about 3.2 amp hours left in there currently pulling 35 amps uh, the battery is reporting to our victron gx it still has eight percent doing 406 watts 35 amps also pulled up the battery app here and it's essentially saying the same thing as what the Victron screen is saying uh, and the app seems to yeah, work just fine it, it has this uh, parallel mode setting I suspect if you have that on maybe it uh, works with the batteries connected with the communication cables I'm not for sure on that but I suspect that's what it is like if you've got multiple batteries so if you got two 100 amp hours then it's gonna see it as a 200 amp hour bank I'm assuming <laughs> don't quote me on that because I don't know for sure anyways I'm gonna let it continue on and uh, and I'll be back real shortly here because it's gonna be well this is gonna be pretty soon all right so this shunt is saying uh, zero but we still have a little bit left in there uh, 0.7 amp hours sorry about that get it in focus 0.6 amp hours uh, still showing 5% on the Victron screen uh, so the battery I'm guessing it thinks it has more in it than the 100 amp hours that we set on this because this is only going to read uh, this is only going to count down 100 amp hours all right so here we go 0 0.06 0 0.05 and there we go a complete 100 amp hours has been discharged through this shunt uh, so it definitely lives up to its amp hour rating uh, now it's still going it's still showing that we have five percent over here now we're seeing four percent Okay, so the inverter over here is beeping. It's usually when I'll turn the test off. Uh, it's still saying we have 3% in the battery. Um, so it's, you know, it's still got some reserve, I guess. Uh, but nonetheless, we did, in fact, pull the one full 100 uh, amp hours. Okay, I did notice when I was editing this last segment, I thought just the inverter went off. Uh, but I noticed that the screen went off too. So the battery shut off Even though it was reporting that it still had you know a few percent left uh, So I don't know if that's something that has to calibrate over a few cycles or something like that. I'm not sure uh, anyways, let's go ahead and Pop this guy open and see what it looks like on the inside All right, so I got it banged off here. I think let's uh Try to get this uh, all the way open now. Still some glue hanging on. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's take a closer, oh here, let's pull this. That's what's holding it. All right, let's take a closer look here. So we see our communication cables coming off the BMS board and then going up to the lid. And we got our negative uh, that goes to the negative terminal. And then there's our switch that goes to the top of the lid. And it connects to the BMS right there. And then we've got our positive wire that goes to the positive terminal. 
and yeah we've got this big old <laughs> BMS that's just basically the size of the whole side of the sails here <laughs> that's a big guy lead time battery management system ZYSW4S100A it says 100 amp charge 100 amp discharge uh, let's see if we can get all these cells out All right, that came right out. All right, let's take a look at the construction here. We got uh, high density foam on both sides. Uh, we've got prismatic cells. We do have material between the cells, separator material. And there is the pressure relief valves on top of the cells and there's holes in this piece of foam for those to be able to vent and then we've got humps on the bus bars for expansion okay there's some um, QR codes let's see if we can get a scan on them Hmm. Yeah, I'm not able to pick anything up, so I'm not sure what these cells are. All right, so I got my charger hooked back up. We're putting a charge in the battery, and I've got the little temperature sensor right here. Let's uh, see if the low temp protection works. You can see here on the, uh, the app, we're putting in 28.5 amps. So let's see what happens here. Okay, took a double shot, but it did go off. Oh, and it warmed back up and uh, it came back on automatically, nice. Let's try that once more. All right, yeah, so we're showing. Yeah, we as soon as uh, it went below 32 degrees, I saw it shut down. So we're at 14, 15. Let's see if we can warm this up. 24, 30, we're at 35. Okay, now we're back. All right, cool. So low temp charging protection works. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap up the video. Let me know what you guys think about this battery in the comments. As always, I'll leave links down in the description. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one.